When I search YouTube, there's very little information out there on building old cars to be real, true daily drivers. It is something economical, safe, comfortable, reliable, all while keeping the immersive driving experience of a 60s era muscle car. Can you have both? Yes, you can, but with a caveat. If you buy a new muscle car, then it's often expensive. It's too heavy for decent gas mileage, and for me anyway, the look just isn't there. Everyone has one, and most are still making payments on it. You just don't have the same swagger as an old car. Now an old car can be expensive too if you force yourself into the common ones like a Chevelle, a Charger, a Camaro, a Mustang. These old cars look the part, but often fall short in reliability. If pressed into stop and go service in the heat of summer, or being forced to drive mile after mile at freeway speed with the factory transmission and short gears. This can be remedied by throwing tons of money at a project and adding new reliable drivetrains, but at that point, would you be willing to beat on it like a true daily and be willing to accept the depreciation? So you see my dilemma. I drive 750 miles a week to work and back, so I've been contemplating this idea for a long time, and I've always been aspects of the daily driver requirement that aren't met in my search. A newer muscle car is laden with extra weight, and cost to obtain one is higher than a lot of folks can afford, myself included. They aren't as cool looking as the stuff from the 60s. The Caprice PPV is, I believe, the best value for a newer muscle car with big power, but at 19 miles to the gallon, 93 octane fuel requirement, and the 4,100 pounds, it's tough to justify using to make a 150 mile a day round trip. And to add another dimension of difficulty to this, what if it had to be done as a budget build? What we will be attempting over the next six to eight episodes is to accomplish just that, and it could very well fail at meeting these goals. We're going to build a cheap 60s GMA body into a reliable daily driver that will be a riot to drive and comfortable to boot. Everything about the car that makes it unreliable will be addressed, like brakes, wiring, powertrain, gauges, HVAC, all that stuff. The goal is to use LS power and the T56 transmission to obtain at least mid 20 mile per gallon on low octane gas. We'll be using some new parts from places like Vintage Air to make sure the ride is comfortable, and many used parts from the junkyard crawling to get the powertrain into the chassis. The engine going in this 65 Oldsmobile is this 4.8 LS. This one's out of a van and the previous owner was complaining of a lifter tick. So they just yanked it and uh, sold it to me for 250 bucks. Um, this is a Gen 4 so it has a displacement on demand system. Um, and that means that those lifters are prone to failure. So I'm assuming that one of those lifters collapsed. Um, uh, it's a, it, I've had it happen before so I'm going to uh, remove that system and put fresh parts in it. Um, this particular engine has probably has a bunch of miles on it. I have no idea how many it had, um, but it's got 243 heads. I think they were rated it from the factory at 275 horsepower. Um, it's the truck setup, so it has the, uh, the standard truck um, front accessory drive, the truck really deep sump oil pan, um, and the like. So. I have another oil pan I'll be swapping on, and we're going to get it cleaned up and ready to go in the car.
So this is the reason why this engine was originally pulled out of the van it left the factory in. So what we have here is sort of your standard LS uh, lifter right there. And then this is a displacement on demand lifter. You can see it's much longer. It's got a bunch of extra components in here to, uh, to collapse that lifter for the displacement on demand system. So there's a lot of extra parts in here and it's uh, very prone to failure. This is the one that I found in pieces inside, uh, inside the block. It's not, it's not supposed to be quick release. So they like to break. Luckily, the, uh, the top half, or I guess this would be the bottom half, this was still in the lifter bore riding on the camshaft, so uh, there wasn't a bunch of metal flakes and stuff all over the engine, so I got lucky on this one, but that is what I was expecting to see, and this is probably what you will see if you have one of these engines. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace all of these with these and just get rid of this system altogether. this morning and we got the short block all cleaned up you can see the head surface there it was all crusty and now it's looking well better than it was and we cleaned the piston tops up did it all with a wire wheel on my drill maybe not the way you do it but that's fine it works so we're getting close to putting the heads back on and the reason that we got bamboozled before here's Mule Town Monty He's not doing much today because he's got the gas, so he's not much help. But I ordered from Rock Auto new lifter trays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so these lifter trays, as you can see, have notches in the bottom. You can see those there. These will work in Gen 3 and Gen 4 engines, and our Gen 3s do not have those, so these would not fit in the block because the block has that, that extra cast ridge, bump, hump, whatever, in the, uh, in the lifter valley, in the lifter tray, in the lifter slot area. So anyway, these are the next thing to go in. Once I make sure I get all my dirt and grease and grime out of there, I'll put my lifters on, which I've been soaking in ATF, put them in these buckets, slide them in, bolt them in, and then, uh, then the heads will be ready to go on.
using head gaskets because I can. Everyone's gonna freak out. We've got our little 4.8 LS engine all buttoned up and ready to go. The next episode, we'll be rebuilding that T56 transmission and swapping it from an LT to an LS style, showing you how to do that. The next time you see this engine, we'll be bolting it to the transmission and putting it in the 65 Olds for the first time. So don't miss that. So stay tuned to the next episode of Mule Town Speed.